Welcome to Crazy Nurse RN Hub, where learning becomes a tradition. Come, join me as we explore the multifaceted world of nursing. Hi there students and welcome to Crazy Nurse RN Hub, where learning becomes a tradition. My name is Crystal Mardocanes, nurse educator, teaching nursing pharmacology. For today's topic, we have drugs affecting the reproductive system. But before we dig into the discussion about pharmacology, we will now have the introduction to the reproductive system. First, we have here the structures involved in female reproductive system. It consists of two ovaries, two fallopian tubes, uterus, and we also have accessory structures such as vagina, clitoris, labia, and breast tissue. So I have here a picture of the female reproductive system structures as your reference. Now let's proceed to hormones. First, we have your estrogen. It is produced by the ovary, placenta, and adrenal gland. And it stimulates the development of female characteristics. And also, it prepares the body for pregnancy. So that these are the functions of your estrogen. Next, we have your progesterone. It is produced by the ovary, placenta, and adrenal gland. And it promotes maintenance of pregnancy. Progesterone is also called as the hormone for pregnancy. Now, let's proceed to ovulation. What is ovulation? It is the release of the ovum or the egg from the follicle into the abdo abdomen okay, for implantation. So that is your ovulation. And how about your menstrual cycle? It is a cyclical nature of the female sex hormones on the body. We also have a term called menarch. It means that it is the onset of menstrual cycle at puberty. And each cycle starts with release of FSH or your follicle stimulating hormone and LH your luteinizing hormone and the stimulation of the ovarian follicles so if that happens it causes a menstrual cycle for women we also have pregnancy what is pregnancy it is when the ovum is fertilized by a sperm a new cell is produced that rapidly divides to produce the embryo. Also, we have a term called menopause. It simply means the cessation of menses. And it happens when there is a depletion of the female ova. And it results in lack of estrogen and progesterone. So this usually happens in older age, okay, in older women. Now let's proceed to the structures of female reproductive system. It consists of two testes, vas deferens, prostate gland, penis, and urethra. So I have here a picture as your reference about the structures of the male reproductive system. You can actually refer on this picture. We also have hormones involved in male reproductive system. First is estrogen. Est uh, sorry, the first is testosterone. First, uh, the main function of this testosterone for male reproductive system is that it is responsible for many sexual and metabolic effects in the male. And male sex hormone produced by the interstitial interstitial or Leydig cells of the testes. So it is where 
this hormone is produced. We also have a term called andropos. It is also known as male climacteric. And it is analogous to female menopause. So in female, it is called menopause. For male, it is called andropause. It occurs with age when the production of testosterone declines with subsequent loss of testosterone effects. So now let's discuss the human sexual response. First, we have the estrous cycle. The endocrine stimuli for sexual response to occur. So it can be sexually stimulated by thoughts, sight, touch, or a variety of combined stimuli in order for a human sexual response to occur. It consists of four phases. So that means in human sexual response, we have four phases. First, we have the stimulation. Next is the plateau. Third is the climax or the orgasm. And lastly, we have the resolution or recovery. When we say stimulation, it is a period of stimulation with mild increases in sensitivity and beginning stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system responses. When we say plateau, it is the stimulation levels off. That means there is a resting period after that stimulation. Then after the plateau, we have the climax, climax or orgasm. It results in massive sympathetic nervous system response or stimulation of the body. So after that resting period, which is the plateau, there you will have the climax, wherein there is a massive or increased sympathetic nervous system stimulation. Then after the person has reached the climax or the orgasm, it will now have the resolution or the recovery. That means the effects of the sympathetic nervous system are resolved. So there is a decrease of the, or, uh, of the orgasm. Okay? It, the body returns to its normal state. So I have here a graph depicting the four phases of the human sexual response. First is we have your stimulation, then after stimulation we have the plateau, then after the plateau we have the orgasm phase, and lastly we have the resolution phase. Where is there in the resolution phase there is a decreasing trend of the orgasm or of the stimulation. Okay, now we're done with the introduction of the reproductive system of both male and female. Now let's proceed to the drugs affecting the female reproductive system. First, let's have the drug classifications. It can be classified as sex hormones, estrogen receptor modulators, fertility drugs, and uterine motility drugs. First, let's have the sex hormones. It includes estrogen and the progesterone. Estrogen examples are estrad estradiol, conjugated estrogen, and estrified estrogen. So it's very easy to identify because there is an estrogen attached to the name of the drug. When we also classify it as a progestin, we have examples such as dosperinone, etonosgestril, levonorgestril, progesterone, and medroxyprogesterone. So it is quite easy for us to also identify if it is progestin or progesterone because you could actually see the name or the term progesterone or somewhat related to that term on the drug itself, on the drug name itself. Now we have the therapeutic and indications, therapeutic actions and indications of your sex hormones. First, for your estrogens, it is used for hormone replacement therapy. So that means if the person lacks 
estrogen on her body, he might use this estrogen or sex hormone medication to increase or to replace that hormone which is lacking to her. Next, it is important for the development of the female reproductive system and secondary sex characteristics. We also have progestins or progesterone. So the therapeutic actions are, it is used as contraceptives. It maintains the pregnancy and development of secondary sex characteristics. And lastly, it is used to treat primary and secondary amenorrhea and functional uterine bleeding. So these are the actions and indications of your sex hormones. Now let's proceed to the contraindications and cautions for progestin. So that means you will not administer this medication if your patient has this following conditions. First is pelvic inflammatory disease. We have your sexually transmitted disease or your STD, endometriosis as well, pelvic surgery if the patient has undergone pelvic surgery so it so the use of progestin will not be indicated for her. We also have renal and hepatic disorders, epilepsy, asthma, and migraine headaches. So these are the contraindications and cautions in administering progestin or progesterone to a patient. And by the way, lastly, we have your cardiac dysfunction. Now let's proceed to the contraindications and cautions of estrogens. First, if the patient is known to have allergies on estrogens idiopathic vaginal bleeding, breast cancer, estrogen-dependent cancer, and your cerebrovascular accident or stroke. We also have hepatic dysfunction, pregnancy, lactation, bone disease, renal insufficiency. So these are the conditions that you need to take note in administering estrogen. So if you see one of these conditions, you will know that you would not give estrogen for them. Next, let's proceed to the adverse effects of your sex hormones. So patient might experience corneal changes, photosensitivity, peripheral edema, cloasma, so cloasma, uh, I have here a picture embedded in this slide, what cloasma looks like. We also have hepatic adenoma, nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, bloating, breakthrough bleeding, change in menstrual flow. So these are the possible adverse effects in taking the sex hormones drugs now let's proceed to another classification which is estrogen receptor modulators these are used to stimulate specific estrogen receptors to achieve therapeutic effects of increased bone mass without stimulating the endometrium and causing other less desirable effects in other words, when we say estrogen receptor modulators, these are stimulators of the estrogen receptor in the body so that it could function as to produce estrogen which will be needed by the body in functioning. Examples are raloxifen or your Evesta, Torim Toremifen or your Fareston. Okay. So the contraindication and cautions for this drug or for this drug classification is if the patient has known allergy, so we will not give the medication, pregnancy, lactation, and venous thrombosis. 
Okay, it would cause venous thrombosis or thrombus in the body. So we will not, uh, it would further aggravate the condition of venous thrombosis. So we will not give estrogen receptor modulators to our patient. And lastly, we have smoking. For the adverse effects, we have venous thromboembolism, hot flushes, skin rash, nausea, vomiting, vaginal bleeding, depression, lightheadedness. So these are the possible adverse effects if the patient takes the, uh, recept the estrogen receptor modulator medication. Now let's proceed to the third drug classification. We have your fertility drugs. It stimulates the female reproductive system. And examples are Centrorelix, Chorionic, Gonadotropin, Gonadotropin, Clomiphen, and Menotropines. So the action and indications for this it works either directly to stimulate follicles and ovulation or stimulate the hypothalamus to increase the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone levels. So basically, when we say fertility drugs, it stimulates ovulation. Okay? So that's the main function of your fertility drugs. Contraindications and caution for this is present our presence of primary ovarian failure, thyroid and adrenal dysfunction, ovarian cyst, pregnancy, idiopathic uterine bleeding, known allergies, breastfeeding, thromboembolic diseases, respiratory diseases. So these are the contraindications and cautions in taking fertility drugs. Next, we have adverse effects. Vasomotor flushing, visual changes, patient might experience abdominal discomfort, distension and bloating, nausea, vomiting, ovarian enlargement, breast tenderness, ovarian stimulation, and multiple pregnancies. 